I'm so glad you're here. My name is Kelsey and I am one of the lead teachers here at Code Joy. And also we have with us today a couple of fun, fun people. This is Matt. Do you guys know Matt? This is uh, our director and producer here at Code Joy. Hi everybody, how you guys doing today? I think we're all doing pretty good. How are you doing today, Matt? I'm doing well. I'm looking forward to answering some questions on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, so since we're going live, um, not just in our Zoom meeting here, but also on a couple different pages, Matt helps us um, monitor those different sources. So Facebook pages, YouTube pages, stuff like that. So if you guys have any comments to leave um, on Facebook or YouTube, you can leave those comments there and Matt will tell us about them and will put those live on TV here. Or if you're one of our Zoom participants, you can unmute yourselves like I uh, told you guys you could do, or um, you can also leave comments in the chat feature there as well. But we have another special guest with us today. Um, his name is Mr. Isaiah, and he is from the Dayton Boys and Girls Club. So we're gonna unmute you, Isaiah, so you can, there you go. Uh, do you wanna, hello. So um, you work at the Dayton Boys and Girls Club, right? Yes, I do. And what's your position there? What do you do? I am what's called a, um, a basically, uh, um, I forgot the, the title of my name. Um, <laughs> That's all right. Uh, but so you, you work with the kids there at the- I at work the with the kids here today, Boys and Girls Club. And um, I work with the kids ages, basically from grades four through eight. Okay. Um, and work with them on a day-to-day -day basis, but, but with the basic stuff like homework and, and other things like that. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, um, Mr. Isaiah is joining us today from Dayton, along with some kids from the Dayton Boys and Girls Club. So, we are canceling my spotlight, putting us on gallery view so everybody can see you guys. Would, you, would anybody like to raise their hand and introduce themselves with their first name and your favorite sport or physical activity? Who wants to introduce themselves? How about you, McKinley and Milan? We're going to unmute you guys and spotlight you so we can hear you. Okay. Hi, my name is McKinley. I'm 15. And uh, my favorite sport is dance. Nice. What kind of dance do you like, McKinley? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Milan. My name is Milan, and I'm seven years old, and I like dance, too. You guys like dance, too? What kind of dance do you guys like? <coughs> um, I like hip-hop and uh, ballet. And what do you like? That's great. How about you, Milan? I just like ballet. You just like ballet. I used to be a ballet dancer too. That's also my favorite physical activity is dancing. Um, how about you, Isaiah and Matthew? Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? We'll unmute you and spotlight you so that we can see you. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, my name's Isaiah. I'm 13 and my favorite physical activity is basketball. Hey, my name's nice. Matthew. Hey, my name's Matthew and I'm 11 years old. My favorite sport is soccer. Very cool. What do you like about basketball, Isaiah? What's your favorite thing about it? Just the teamwork and scoring and stuff. Yeah. And how about you, Matthew? What's your favorite thing about soccer? Uh, scoring. Scoring? <laughs> that is always uh, very satisfying. I can say that I was on a soccer team for a couple years and I never once scored a goal, but I had a good time <laughs> anyway. I like playing sports. I'm not the best at sports, but I like doing it. Um, but we do want to give a, a huge shout out to um, Family Maker Camp, who's putting this on together. So for you guys who are here on Zoom or anybody who's watching live on Facebook or YouTube, if you make along with us today, um, you can tweet or on Facebook or anywhere and use the hashtag make together to... Um, uh, signify that you were watching along and that you have something you want to say to us. So there's something you can do there. So the project that we are going to make today is actually we're going to be making um, some a catapult. And um, we're going to be making a catapult and talking about shooting baskets. So Mr. Isaiah um, has been doing some really cool work with the Dayton Boys and Girls Club, even while they're in quarantine, kind of doing some different like physical activities and videos of that over the past couple weeks. So I thought it would be cool to kind of line up with him and make a catapult. And he actually captured some video of himself shooting hoops. And so we're going to kind of talk about shooting hoops and make a catapult to shoot a hoop as well. So let me talk you through kind of how this catapult works and what a catapult is and what supplies you might want to gather. And then I encourage you guys here on Zoom, so McKinley and Milan and Isaiah and Matthew, you guys can just start making a catapult out of whatever you have around. And you at home, you can start making a catapult too. And then we're going to try to figure out how to make our catapults better. Because as you're about to see, my catapult is like 
kind of janky. Like it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work great. Let me show you what, uh, what supplies you might want in order to make a catapult. So if you've got them, you might want some craft sticks or anything else that's like, um, long and hard and thin, kind of like a craft stick. So stuff like, uh, a paintbrush. This could be a stand-in for a craft stick or um, a spatula or anything like that that you've got at home. So something um, long and skinny and hard to be, if we can talk about what catapults are and what's involved in catapults a little bit. Um, this is my little diagram of uh, a catapult. So I'll kind of put these off to one side here and then put the supplies there so you can gather some supplies. So catapult has like four basic parts. It's got a base, it's got an arm, it's got a basket, and it's got a tension source. And then the thing that it shoots is a projectile. So for the base, that's what you'd want like craft sticks or a spoon, a, 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 a hard kind of spoon thing for. Um, for the arm, I used a plastic spoon here, but you could also use like a craft stick and like, I had these somewhere. Um, you could use a craft stick and like a bottle cap, like I have a bottle cap here. Oh, I remember where I put them in here so that I didn't, they didn't roll away. You could use like a craft stick and a bottle cap to make the basket here, something like that, from a milk jug or a Mountain Dew bottle, anything like that. Um, for our projectile, we're gonna use a penny if you've got one, or you could make like a little tape ball or a ping pong ball, anything that has a little bit of weight to it. Um, and then our goal, what we're gonna try and get our catapult to do is we're gonna try and get it to shoot the projectile into a cup because we're gonna talk about basketball today as well. So you're gonna try and get your projectile to go into a cup. And so you might also want some cardboard, tape, scissors, stuff like that. But let me show you what's wrong with my catapult <laughs> right now. So I'll move this off to the side here too. Let me show you how well my catapult works right now. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> let me try it a little bit better. All right, so that's my catapult right now. It's not very impressive, but basically all I did is I, I rubber banded a spoon to a craft stick and then I put some other craft sticks together and I shoved those in there so that here's my base, here's my arm, here's my basket, and here's my tension source. There's some, a rubber band there. And so I'm trying to use that to shoot something and it just doesn't go. So we're gonna troubleshoot my catapult in just a second. But before we do that, I wanna give you guys a chance. You guys can go ahead and make a catapult like this or if you already have some ideas about how could you adjust the base or the arm or the basket or the tension source here? Start to make your own version of a catapult at home because I bet you can do better <laughs> than I did. But I want to talk to Mr. Isaiah a little bit. Um, so uh, if we can if we can chat with you for a minute, Mr. Isaiah. Sure. How long have, yeah. How long have you been at the boy, at the Dayton Boys and Girls Club? Actually, I've only been here for the last couple months. I just recently. Uh, accepted the position of program manager okay at the day hey. <laughs> congratulations that's great <laughs> yeah. um so you've been there for a couple months and um so do you do you do a lot of like physical activity with the kids there there at the dayton boys and girls club um as before the uh quarantine happened yeah definitely doing a lot of physical activity from anything from basketball to running around playing kickball to going outside uh just trying to increase the level of physical activity in the, the, the boys and girls that frequent here at the club um yeah. a lot of the kids back nowadays uh, play a lot of video games and i'm not really a video gamer so i wanted them to yeah. experience the outside experience uh physical activity and kind of get enjoy you know moving their bodies a little bit more yeah is uh, what's your favorite sport to uh, favorite sport or physical activity either to do yourself or to do with the kids at the Boys and Girls Club? Um, my favorite sport, I've been coaching basketball before I came to the Boys Club for over 15 years now uh, at the high school level and oh, wow. now the junior high level. I'm, I've been fortunate enough this year to coach my son uh, at the junior high level. Um, and then my favorite sport right now that I'm enjoying, I actually am a runner. I've okay. become a runner for the last five to six years. And my goal is to run 2000 miles. And I am 48 miles away from 2000. 
Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I love that. Like you've, uh, was that like 2,000 miles in a year or like 2,000 no, miles? No, 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 not 2,000 okay. miles in a year. <laughs> I um, was like, I you started, better get running. You got to go. <laughs> I started running seven years ago and I average around about, I average about 300 miles a, a year. And um, like I said, I'm not, a, I'm not a professional, but I do like, I try to get around eight to 10. Now I'm starting to do about eight, 10 miles a week. Wow. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And so you've been coaching basketball at the middle yes. school and the high school level for quite a few years now. You said 15 years. That's great. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that might be a good transition, actually. So you were shooting some hoops uh, earlier today and you sent us some video. We were yes. going to have you shooting hoops live in the Boys right. and Girls Club right. gym, but the Wi-Fi wasn't very good there. Right. So plan B, we've all, plan we're always B. talking about engineering is always finding <laughs> a backup plan and Absolutely. saying, yep, that didn't work, but oop, this does. So we captured some video or you captured some video of yourself um, shooting some hoops today. So mm -hmm. if we can, let's take a look at you doing some warm up drills and maybe can you kind of talk us through what you're doing? Okay. Um, right now, usually when I go in and I do some warm ups, I always warm up around the basket, laying the ball up, getting my blood working, getting some flow going into my, my, uh, physical extremities, my arms and my legs. So I yeah. always do this drill. This is what they call uh, the mic and drill. So I go off of two feet and I lay the ball up left hand and right hand to get okay. both hands going. Um, I feel like the best basketball players can utilize both hands equally. Yeah. And then for an, off, off of two feet. And then once I make 10, I go off of one foot and do the same ah. drill off of right hand and the left hand. And it just gets me warmed up. All the players that I've ever coached, I take them through this drill just That's to get great. them going and even if they think it's simple once you get going it gets your <laughs> blood flowing it gets you working a little bit it's also a great conditioning drill yeah that's that's a really good drill. And we kind of had it like regular speed and then slowed down a little bit too. Something I'm noticing that it's been a couple of years since I've played any basketball is in that drill, particularly you were really using the backboard, which is that that thing up behind the, the hoop. And in my stand in hoop, I don't have a backboard mm. back like the backboard makes it easier to shoot and make Absolutely. a basket. Right? Right, um, right. When you're aiming. So I think it might actually be a good idea for us at home to since if we want to make this more like basketball to make a backboard. So I'm going to go ahead right. and make a backboard here. Okay. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about in that drill? Are you aiming at the hoop? Are you aiming at the square behind it? How are you using the backboard when you're going through that drill? Can we see that again? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm actually aiming for the top of the square. So the, ah, the square okay. inside the square, I'm aiming for the top of the square to make sure that the ball is going over the rim because some people aim for the bottom of the square and sometimes it, it falls up short. So mm. in the, the square within the square, I'm aiming for the top of that square for it to fall right into the basket. Okay. So um, that kind of helps it get over the, over the edge of the rim. And right. I see even if you like, even when you're not like, you're not hitting the top of the square, but you're aiming for up there. My, um, my grandpa was really into bowling and mm -hmm. he taught me how to bowl. So I've, I've been a bowler for a long time. And he always said, you don't aim at the pins. You aim at the little arrows halfway down the lane. Instead, okay. so it sounds like um, you know you play enough basketball and you get used to kind of how the ball bounces off the backboard, and you're not aiming for the hoop; you're aiming for a part of the backboard. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you also, when you're doing, when you're um, shooting free throws, I think we have some video of you shooting some free throws as well. Do you um, also like rely on the um, on the backboard when you're shooting free throws too? No, I actually don't. So ah. your tra your trajectory and your eye level changes. I'm kind of like using like the catapult. I'm aiming for the front of the rim. I'm aiming for right over the front of the rim. I want the ball to go like perfectly in, which it probably dev never does it all the time. <laughs> but I'm aiming right for the right over. The, I want to go over the rim, the loops in the uh, the net. I'm aiming for over those. So as you just seen that last shot, it went right over the loops and just kind of trickled in. Cause that's actually what I'm aiming for. I want it to go right down the center of the rim. Okay. So you're like aiming for a, a swoosh and nothing but mm -hmm. net. Oh, no. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> uh, is that a better strategy when you're doing free throws? Is that a, a better strategy you think rather than trying to aim it off the backboard? It is because you're further away from the basket and the further you are away, the more muscle that you have to put into it. And so mm -hmm. what that does is that puts more speed on the ball. If you're aiming for the backboard, so sometimes if you're aiming for the backboard and you don't have the proper speed up on the ball or the rotation of the ball, mm. you'll end up hitting the backboard and it'll come right back to you. So okay. whether, so then you put the, you can kind of con control the rotation a little bit if you're just aiming for the center of the rim because you're further back. 
Okay, gotcha. So can I get some feedback from you, Isaiah? I made a backboard for my um, for my basket oh, okay. here. <laughs> pretty good. Looks How'd pretty I do? Good. Did I, I mean it's not a perfect square, but like, is there anything that I did I like wrong it. here? No, it looks good. Okay, all right. So I got a backboard. I'm gonna tape it on so I don't accidentally whack it off here. You know, with the speed and velocity of my projectile. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You become scientific. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So here I've got my backboard on my cup. So I'm setting myself up for success. Cool. Mm -hmm. But actually, it looks like McKinley and Milan, you guys are doing some experimentation there. Can we check in on you guys? <laughs> you guys have some cups. I saw you were working with your spoons a little bit. We're going to unmute you guys. How are your catapults going? What's happening? Um, so we got like some little Lego pieces and um, she's trying to get it because it flew out of the thing. <laughs> but, um, and basically we just put like two sticks because we're not, I, I don't really know like how to do this. So we oh, okay. Sticks, and okay, we, so you just kind of put yours to the side. Show me how that's working. How's that going? And then we just like lick the bottom and it goes pretty, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was I mean, it's going okay. <laughs> uh, I like the Lego pieces as the thing. Okay, so you guys are, if I can kind of recreate what you guys did on mine, I'm gonna come back here. So you guys kind of had your, your craft sticks here and then you guys like kind of, did you shove your, um, your, your arm kind of in between the two sticks? Is that what you guys did? Um, no, we used like a rubber band and just uh, put it like over top. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna put this back on here. And so you used another rubber band, which I'll snag this one. Hair ties work great too, if y'all don't have rubber bands. <laughs> okay, so you guys just kind of like, what was that? You have to grab the Lego piece. You got which kind? She's actually, um, you have to grab a Lego piece. Oh you yeah, you can grab a Lego piece. Really anything that's got a little bit of weight to it. Okay, so this is what you guys did here. So you guys kind of had your your thing on the side here, and then you're like pressing, or, or I guess you're pressing, are you pressing down on the you're arm, pressing, yeah, or are you pressing, pressing up on the arm? Down. You're pressing down, okay. Yeah. Okay, so if I put my projectile in the basket of my catapult here, they were pressing down, and then I think actually, I'm maybe it's because my penny is heavier, but it's actually like, I'm pressing down on the arm, which is bringing the basket up. Let me go here, actually, so you can maybe see it a little bit better. Oops. Yeah, got it. Um, so uh, if I press down on the basket here, it's actually like bringing the, or if I press down on the arm, it's bringing the basket up. And so it's like then slamming the basket down. So I think I'm gonna try it by pushing the arm up. Whoa! <laughs> that went really far! Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> That was great. So how about McKinley and Milan? Why don't you guys try that? Try instead of pushing down on the arm, pull up on the arm like like so and then let it go and see how far that goes. Yeah, try that. It went high. I tried not to oh, flick yeah. it. Oh, yeah. it to go. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's cool. I like the design that you guys made with the with the two different I've I've lost my penny entirely, so I'm on <laughs> I'm on the nickel train now because I'm, I'm just going to go through all my change. <laughs> so instead of pressing down on the arm, if you press up on the arm, that really goes. That's a good time. Uh, I think that one might get the award for, uh, it's definitely higher than mine. The way that mine was going, it, it just like kind of went like it didn't go very far. So doing this definitely got it to get an art, especially if you like really wind up on it. That is a great design. Um, I actually want to um, check in on something called the engineering design process really quick. Have, uh, have any of you guys heard of this thing, the engineering design process before? No? It's a really easy process for like, um, for solving problems. So basically you ask like, what's the problem that we're trying to solve? You imagine some different solutions for like, well, we could do this or we could do this or this pick one and you plan it out. Okay, we're going to do this one. You do it, you test it, and you're probably going to find another problem. And so when you find that problem, 
okay, what's the problem now that we're trying to solve? Let's imagine some solutions. And so it just kind of feeds back into itself. So um, McKinley and Milan, you guys with yours, my first problem was I can't get this thing to go very high. So we that was our problem. We said, I can't get my projectile to go very high. Let's imagine some different solutions. So you imagined a solution where the arm was rubber banded right onto, um, I guess this would be like the base here in this one, and this would be the arm and the basket. And then the tension source is this rubber band. And so we're pushing, we're actually pulling up on the arm or pushing up on the arm and then letting it go. So we imagined it, we planned it, we created it, we tested it. And so now you get some pretty good height, but I'm actually wondering uh, if we can, what else can we change about this? Let me check in with Isaiah and Matthew. Have you guys made a, have you guys made a, a catapult, a working one yet? Yeah, we pretty much did the exact same thing you did, but okay. I just tied, I put a piece of wood like under yeah. the spoon. Uh huh. And then I tied it to the regular, just like the main part, so it doesn't move side to side. Yeah, that's so smart. That was such a problem with mine. <laughs> so how, how well does it work? Do you have a projectile around that you can shoot? No, I can't find one. I'll go get one, but. Okay. We'll check in with you. Let me try doing the same thing on mine. So I'm going to recreate that design that you guys did because that is a, the, the problem that you guys identified was that my tension source, if I can bring my, my um, diagram back in here, my tension source was this, was this bunch of uh, popsicle sticks in the middle here, um, but my tension source kept moving around. So I'm going to put my rubber band back on the bottom here. And so they identified another way to fix that. Uh, or a way to stabilize that a little bit, which was to also rubber band the tension source on there. So while I'm working on this, um, Isaiah, uh, since you've been coaching basketball for so long, um, I wonder, like, when you're um, when you're working with kids and you're trying to um, when you're trying to help kids like be more accurate, because I think that's going to be our next problem is like accuracy. What are some tips that you tell students or, or your, your kids that you coach um, to help them be more accurate when they're shooting? The first thing I do is I look at their, I, I allow them to shoot and I look at their positioning from their feet to their hands, the way they place it on the ball to where their eyes are looking at. So um, once I get that, I try to get them feet shorter length apart um one thing that i learned from steph curry i just like a couple years ago he liked the in which because he's a great shooter he puts yeah. his right foot in front of his left because he's right-handed and then if ah. you're left-handed you put your left foot in front of your right but just slightly not a lot but just slightly because uh, okay. you want to always get a good base um and, and you want to establish that base your knees have to be bent it's very hard to shoot with your legs standing straight up and then okay. the position of your hands on the ball so if I uh, had a ball, I would have one hand behind the ball and one, uh, my, my, my main hand will be behind the ball because once I begin to uh, traject the ball up in the air, it's going to be go underneath the ball. And then I have the other ball, which is my guide hand on the side of the ball, because really people look, it looks like you're shooting with two hands, but it, in, at the end, you're going to end up shooting with that one dominant hand or that uh, whatever hand that is. I'm right-handed yeah. um, and that most going to be one hand. So like I said, I look at all those factors. Um, because one of the things is you don't want, you want the ball to have rotation. That's what I learned from a lot of the mm -hmm. coaches that, that coach me. You want to have rotation on the ball, meaning you don't want the ball just to be in the air, not doing anything. You actually want it rotating and you actually want it to be rotating sort of backwards. So you have a, ah. a back a backspin on the ball. Uh -huh. So with that dominant hand, you want your fingertips on the ball. You don't want your palm on the ball and you want to release the ball with a backspin. So you, that's what people like to use the term. They want to flick the ball. Yeah. You, when you're flicking it, you're adding a backspin. And as that ball is rotating, you usually see about two and a half rotations for it to go in the, into the basket. Now, it's not okay. precise. Um, yeah. That's why I said I like to see how people uh, are doing it. Just like these catapults, they're different. Everybody's body is different. And some things are uncomfortable to, to people that are comfortable to others. Right. So that's why you see a lot of shot forms uh, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of shot, a little, a lot of shot forms in, in different people. So, but the basics have to be the same where your fingertips are on the ball, your elbow is aligned with the rim mm. and you're looking at the rim and then you get that uh, backwards rotation with the guide hand and hopefully that'll get you the results that you intended. 
So that gives me a, a really good idea of, uh, so there's, there's two things I want to pick out about what you said and then, and then relate that to Isaiah and Matthew's design here, which is you were talking about um, your one hand and I'm right-handed as well. So the one hand is the power and the other hand is stabilizing the ball as you're shooting. Mm -hmm. So this one is providing all the power for it. And this one's just making sure it doesn't roll off to the side. So you're right. not actually pushing with both hands. You're really just pushing with one hand to shoot mm -hmm. there. Um, so that's kind of like what is happening here. Like this is providing all the power, but these two rubber bands that Isaiah innovated on here, those are stabilizing the arm. I like that it's actually called the arm here too. Did you guys find any projectiles, Isaiah and Matthew? Let's check in. Did you find something to shoot? Yeah, um, I got a paper ball. <laughs> well, paper ball and a paper yeah. Ball. yeah, let's so, see how it's working. All right. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it just went like straight up and back down. It Hold did, on. it did. Let me try it with my nickel too. That got some real height on it. That's pretty great. I'm going to try it with my nickel. Um, if I poke my eye out, um, just <laughs> pray for me, I suppose. <laughs> okay, so here I go. I'm going to hold it down. Ah! Okay, I could do better. I could do better. I was scared. I was scared. You can't, you have to commit to the, sh the, to the shot, right, Isaiah? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. I caught it. Does that count for anything? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna aim it that way a little bit. I really like what you did here, Isaiah. Isaiah the kid to put this um, popsicle stick behind it. That's really um, creating a lot more tension, a lot more opportunity for tension back there. So as I pull this down, whoa! Now mine's mine's not going forward at all. It's still just going kind of straight up and down. I've got to get. I've got like the. I've got the ups but I don't have the, I don't have the power yeah. behind it. How's yours doing, Isaiah? Yours looks like, look like it went forward when you shot it. What's different about your design and my design? Um, mine is just like staying straight when it goes down. Mm. Like when you were like fiddling with yours before it kept going side to side. Mm -hmm. I, I, I almost I have... made it in the cup, but. Can you hold your spoon up to the camera? I want to see what your spoon looks like. Your spoon looks a little tougher than mine. I have another spoon I want to try out here. Do, 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 do. Okay. But I have a spoon that's a little harder. If I can just pull this one out here. Okay. So this one's pretty bendy. This one's really thin plastic. This one's a little mm -hmm. thicker. So I'm going to try and put that one on there. Um, and I might have to unrubber band things to get it back in there. So it might take me a minute. Um, but while we're doing that, let me check in with um, Mr. Isaiah. And um, how about for, you know, so it sounds like you mostly co coached uh, high school and middle school. But I know sometimes, you know, some kids are really tall and it's easy to get up to the basket. Some kids are a little shorter, so they might need a little bit more power to get it up there. What do you, how do you help kids have more power to really get it all the way up, to, uh, get the ball all the way up to the net? Uh, one thing we use for more power is bending at the knees. Mm. Um, so, so that you can use the actual, your leg strength. A lot of the strength for your shot comes from your legs and not from your arms, uh. um, to being able to have a, a good core. So during the off season, we really work on the core. We do continually work on the upper body strength, but mm -hmm. being able to stand in that, uh, that, that position to be able to get, be able to catch the ball and then, and increase the, uh, decrease the time that, uh, a lot it to be able to get your shot off. So you won't get it blocked if you're a shorter person. So mm -hmm. you got to be able to be in that position where your knees are bent, shoulder length apart, having your right foot in front of your left, ready to catch the ball, ready to release the ball as soon as you get it. And, you know, your trajectory on the shot is based on the strength of your legs. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's really all about the the base, mm -hmm. to quote uh, Megan Trainer, <laughs> <laughs> if I might. <laughs> so your strength for your shot doesn't come from your arms, although arm strength is important. The strength for your shot actually comes from the base in your legs. So maybe that's something we can think about adjusting on our catapult too. Right, I know the, right. the base of your body is different from the base of this catapult, but something I'm seeing if I can go here for a second, can you guys see on my catapult, when I'm holding down this end, my base isn't even touching. I don't know if that matters or not, but we'll find out. Okay, I'm gonna try and give it a go. And, uh, Man, mine's still just going up and down. It's not going forward at all. Maybe if I change my projectile. I also have, instead of a nickel, I have this little like styrofoam ball. What were you guys using, Isaiah and Matthew? You guys found a, a, a ball of paper? Is that what you guys found? 
Go ahead. We yep. can a ball of paper. So maybe if I change my projectile to something lighter weight. Here we go. Let's try it with this styrofoam ball now. Blah. No, it's still just going forward. Or it's still just going up. It's Oh, there we go. Woo. Woo. That one kind of went. Okay. So now I've got it going. There we go. I think you had said something, Isaiah, about stabilizing it, really making sure it was centered. So I'm making sure that my spoon is really well centered on the base here before I let it go. And that seems to get it to go forward a little bit more. And I'm really holding down the bait, the other side with my finger. There we go. That's getting somewhere. That's pretty cool. Um, let's we check in. We had a suggestion from oh. online, Kelsey. Yeah, what is it, Matt? Uh, somebody was suggesting that you add more popsicle sticks to, uh, to the base to change the angle of the arm. Oh, so like like this like um adding more popsicle sticks down here to like give it a little bit more height. oh that's a good idea what do you guys think of that let me check in with mckinley and milan what do you think i could add down here to to give some more height to the to the base down here to instead of it being flat actually raising up the base a little bit do you guys have any suggestions um, um i'm not really sure Sure, actually. I think you need another rubber band. I think I need another rubber band. Where should I put my other rubber band, Milan? Where should it go? Um, at the bottom of the um, at the bottom of the spoon. At the bottom of the spoon, maybe that would increase some of the tension down here if we can look at it from the top again. So we could add another rubber band down here. Maybe that would keep it a little bit more secure. We could do that. Let me check in with you, Isaiah and Matthew. Do you guys have any ideas for how I could add something to my base to change the angle of my spoon a little bit? Do you guys have any ideas? Yeah, I have no idea because mine isn't staying flat at the bottom either. Yeah, ditto. Okay, so let's think. I've got a list of supplies here. So let me pull out my list of supplies. Do, 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 you could do, tape it. Do. What could I add? So we're, we're identifying, we're asking another question here. We're asking the question, what could I add to the base of my catapult? Oops. What could I add to the base of my catapult so that, and I'm going to show you from the side here, so that instead of trying to lay flat like this, I can add some material under here so that the base is being held up at a little bit of an angle. Oh. Yeah, so let me go back to the top view here so you can see all the supplies that I have to work with. This is all the kind of stuff I have in my workshop here. What could I add under here? And I can probably tape it on there. I heard somebody say you could tape it. What could I tape on the bottom here to make the angle of my base a little bit higher? What do you guys think? Bottle caps. Maybe a bottle cap? I got one of those. Yeah. I think you... What do you think, Milan? I think you need, like, like a, um, a What? She doesn't know. She's not sure. That's all right. <laughs> if you think of another idea, I'm going to go with Isaiah's idea for now. And I'm going to try, I'm going to get some tape and I'm going to tape a, this bottle cap onto the bottom of my base so that it'll change the angle of my of my thing, of my uh, catapult. So Isaiah, thinking about angles, I bet angles are really important when you're trying to shoot something in basketball. Can Definitely. you tell me some ways in basketball that that you think about angles as you shoot? Um, we shoot when we think about angles, like for instance, the bank shot. We 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 like to bank it from the angles, from the 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 wing or what we call the right side or the left side of the the rim where it's not necessarily in the corner, it's between the corner and the and the top of the key. A lot of people, uh, a Hall of Famer, Tim Duncan, made famous the, the bank shot from that that angle. Now, back in, well, he just brought it back to life. There was a lot of people back in the day that used to use the bank shot as uh, their their tool of, uh, tool of, tool of scoring, of effectiveness in a game. So he brought it back to life where he would like angle he would go at an angle at the basket and use the bank shot in order to get, get points. So he, okay. he definitely uses those angles. Um, a lot of people shoot better from the angles, but they don't actually know that the angle shot is actually the furthest shot from the basket where the, the shortest distance from the basket is actually in the corners and, and at the top, but the angles is actually the, the, the longest distance, but people seem to shoot better from the angles, I guess, because of the, 
their depth perception, what they see, their vision, mm -hmm. and how they're able to get the ball up from those angles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, so when you're talking about the angles, you were talking about the key as well. If I can turn my cardboard over here, the key on the basketball court do, 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 is like, okay, so here's the, here's the basket. <laughs> And then there's like this thing, right? And this is mm -hmm. the key. Is right. that right? Here's right. the free throw line. And then there's like usually a little square over here. Yeah. And then okay. how many little tick marks are there going up? I don't remember. I think it's like three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that, right? Mm -hmm. So when you were talking about the angles, uh, when you were talking about people shooting from the angles, where, where were you talking about them shooting from on here? Outside of the key. Like okay. right, right where your marker is, a little bit further out to the right. Yeah, you go. Uh -huh. And they would shoot from like right, right in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. over here, like over here, in a, uh, same same kind of spot over there, that is right. where some of the most accurate shots are made? Absolutely. Yep. That's really cool. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. So um, I would think that people would want to shoot from like inside the key all the time, but you can only spend so much time in there, right? Well, even inside the key you kind of want to approach the ball from that, that X spot to get mm -hmm. a layup at, you want to approach the rim at an angle so you can okay. use the backboard better. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're thinking is that it has something to do with like our depth perception, how like, you know, cause as we were looking at the, if we go back to the video of you um, shooting hoops, um, either one, um, you can see that like uh, approaching it from the angle, you're going to get the backboard as a kind yeah. of like rounding and the hoop sticking out. So you can use your depth perception a little bit more. Right. That's really cool. I hadn't mm -hmm. thought of that. That's great. So um, that's really good to know like that because, you know, you can only spend a limited amount of time in the key. And I thought that that was the only reason that people didn't shoot from inside there more. But you're saying that actually, uh, even if you shoot from in here, you want to have some kind of approach from out here, even mm -hmm. if you're shooting a layup or something so that you can have a little bit more accurate depth perception. That's cool. Right. All right, so I went ahead and took Isaiah, Isaiah the kid's advice, <laughs> and I attached a bottle cap onto the bottom here to think that maybe it would, maybe my, my shot will go further over that way if I adjust the angle so that it's now up at a little bit more of an angle there so it's not flat anymore. Let's give it a go. I've got my, uh, my styrofoam ball in there. I'm winding up. Hey, it did actually. It did go forward a little bit more. Hey, great idea, Isaiah. That worked awesome. How's yours going? Let's check in on you. Is yours going forward a little bit more? Yeah, I added popsicle sticks to the wow. bottom. Oh, smart. So it's more raised up. Can you show us oh. a close up on that? I really like, you've got like uh, tier. Yeah, you've got like tiers. Yeah, so you've got like the the popsicle stick bundle that's in between your arm and your base. And then you've also got another popsicle stick bundle that's on the bottom. I think that's yeah. even smarter than a bottle cap because you can really easily adjust how high that goes by just adding more mm -hmm. popsicle sticks. Such a smart idea. Yep. Okay, so let's check in on McKinley and Milan as well. How are your designs going? Because I want to have a shoot off. That's going to be our like big activity at the end. We're going to have a shoot off to see if we anybody can make a basket. Well, we went back to our original, we tried to try some new things, but yeah. we went back to our original, like, one stick design where we, yeah. uh, like, do the things forward. Hold on, I think I messed it up. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I put it back in the middle. Okay, uh -huh. yeah, like this. Okay. Or oh, and you're actually loading it. You can either, yeah, you can, like, load it from, by pushing your finger down on the spoon part on the basket, or by yeah. pushing up on the arm, either one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got your... Yeah, okay. okay. Can you make a basket? Let me try. <laughs> I haven't made one yet today, so. <laughs> oh, no, it went all the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. There's always more Legos. That's been my experience. <gasps> wow, you did it! <laughs> ah, amazing! You did it! <laughs> That was amazing, McKinley. You get the award for the first basket made today. I have been doing this since 11 o'clock last night. <laughs> I haven't gotten it in. That's amazing, McKinley. You're so cool. Uh, does anybody on Facebook have anything to say about that, Matt? <laughs> uh, no, nothing Nothing yet. Uh, the, the comments are rushing in, though. I'll, I'll Let me updated. know. <laughs> That is awesome, McKinley. I can't believe we captured that on video. That's so cool. 
Well, well, I am gonna. I am. Actually, I am gonna. Oh well, yeah. We, we do have a comment now. What is it? Uh, Make Magazine. Whoa. This is, this is Make Magazine itself. Uh, <laughs> says, Yay, McKinley. <laughs> 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 Yay, McKinley! Make magazine itself. That is awesome, McKinley. Way to go! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. Sh sh uh, go ahead, take a bow, McKinley. We'll spotlight you. Take a bow, take a bow. Oh yes, very good. Keep taking a bow. Um, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now for us, uh, friends and learners and makers, is I want to have a little bit of a shoot off. Okay, so we're going to go to gallery view and we're not going to spotlight anybody so that we can see all of us. And so I want you to see if you can put your cup somewhere near the camera. I think I'm going to go to this camera angle. Okay, so you can see my basket with my backboard. And if you want to make a backboard, I say cheat to win. Um, <laughs> or no, sorry, engineer to win. And so now we're going to put, you know, three minutes on the clock and we're going to see how many baskets we can make in three minutes. Are you ready to try, friends? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to try. All right, here goes the clock. Oh, actually, I'm going to use my phone as our as a timer here. So here oh, we I go. Might, I might be. Oh, that. Matt can help can. with that. Yep. You. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> I'm going to give you the uh, the three, two, one. Okay. Woo hoo hoo. And uh, McKinley and Ma uh, Milan, you guys are great. Isaiah and Matthew, you guys are great. But I'm here to tell you, you're going down. Right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Ready? And three, two, one, go. All right, one for Milan, one for Milan. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if we can have your help keeping score, we're gonna have we're gonna have some difficulty here very soon. Nope. 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 We did so much engineering, and now, oh, I was so close. Did you guys see that? I was so close. Come on. Our pieces are falling everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I was getting so close. Come on. Prayer. Oh, so Come on. Oh, man. Nope. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, man, I used the backboard. It still didn't work, though. Come back. Get all the pieces. Running to go chase your projectile is the funnest part. Okay. And we are one minute down. Oh, one minute down, okay. two minutes have, to go. We have two. I have two. You have two? Man, yeah. oh man. Oh man, I used the backward and I thought I had it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh. It's still not working. Oh. Oh, so close. <laughs> I go, keep going, keep going. Don't celebrate. It's excessive three, celebration. You got, you got three. You got three. Oh no. <laughs> nope. Nope. Three. How'd you guys get three? Gosh. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Get in there, you. Get in there. Oh, over the backboard, a little overzealous. Too much power, too much power. Less in the legs. Oh, so close off the rim. And one minute left. One everybody. minute left. Man. Man. The score is, is it two? Oh, oh, four. 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 McKinley and Milan have three. Kelsey has one. Isaiah, I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero. <laughs> zero. Uh, your catapult is the, the cool. Oh, I got two. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, listen, I know I'm catching up to you, okay? You gotta give a girl a chance. All right, come All right, on. 30 seconds go. left, everybody. 30 three. seconds. I got three. I got three. Five, five. Oh, now I know what I'm doing now. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. Isaiah, so close. <laughs> so close, Isaiah. <laughs> I believe in you. No. How many seconds we got left, Matt? We're down to 15 seconds. 15 seconds. I'll Will give you give us a countdown? 10 second countdown. 10, <gasps> 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Oh one. man! Oh, I thought I was gonna have everybody. a buzzer beater. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, McKinley and Milan, nice job, nice job. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Fantastic job, everybody. 
That was that was really good. McKinley Milan, congratulations. Let's give him a round of applause. A round of applause. Isaiah, you had such great designs for yours. Like my whole design for my thing is based on like suggestions from McKinley and Milan and so many suggestions from you too. So I think you you may get our like engineer of the of the year award. We've actually got okay. some oh, no. awards. Whoa, whoa. No. <laughs> Didn't work out quite the way we wanted it to. We can... It's gonna, it, will it work? Let's see. Yes, yes, I can do it. Okay. It's gonna take just so one we've, moment. Yeah, Matt is going to, we've got some awards to give out today. So we're gonna try these out and we're gonna see if, if we can make them. So we made some awards last night, not knowing how anybody's stuff would actually turn out. <laughs> not knowing if anybody could actually do it. We made some little awards last night. And so we're going to, um, we're gonna see if we can get those up and get those working. But let me get you guys' reflection on this because something that is not, um, not uh, represented as part of my engineering design process right now, but is totally part of the process is reflecting on it after you did it. So what did you guys think was the funnest part of doing this activity? Um, Building it. What, what was that, Milan? I'll go to Milan and then Isaiah. Mine was to make the basket in. Was making the baskets? Yeah, just like in sports. The funnest part's scoring, right? <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Isaiah? What was your favorite part? I just like building it. Yeah? What did you yeah. like about building it? What was what what did you like about that process or yeah? Just adjusting it and trying to make it better. Yeah, trying trying different things over and over again. Mm -hmm. Um if you uh if you were going to um make this project again what would you add to the project or what would you change about uh, either the project that you made or the way that we did it? What would you change about it? I would try to make it go more forward than up. Yeah. That Cause was it went like straight up and down every time. I know, me too. And I just kept moving the, the basket and the catapult yeah. closer together. That was my solution. <laughs> I was like, just get closer to the basket. There you go. Um, that was my biggest problem too. So if you're out there on Facebook or YouTube, and if you have any ideas about how to get the projectile to go more forward, we'd love to hear them because that was something both Isaiah and I struggled with a lot. Um, so McKinley and Milan, let's see, we are going, I think we have some awards. We do have Whoa. some awards. Uh, um, you know the different awards that we have. I think <laughs> I think the accuracy award would be very appropriate. Yes. So right. here we've got, these are paper plate boards. So stand really still and smile really big. And then we're going to see if this works. See if this works. There we go. Okay, we could do this. All right. Let's see if it works. Uh, is it coming through? <laughs> Control seven. No. No. It's, oh, wait, you know, it is there, but it's in the top one. Oh, you Let's can see, see it in your little, little thing there. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, technology doesn't always work out the way we want it to. Can we, can we do gallery view again, or did that do something weird? Uh, we could try that again. Let's try see. Again it. And well, it, it, it ended up doing the same thing. Oh, but just in my little thing. Yeah. Well, listen. Here's what we'll do. Uh, we will. We will. Um, here, you guys smile really big. I've got an idea. We'll do a screenshot, Matt. Ah, that's a good idea. Yeah, we're gonna do a screenshot. So you guys smile really big, like we're taking a picture, because we are. <laughs> We're going to spotlight you guys. <laughs> there okay. we go. <laughs> and then we're going to put this in OBS, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, th this is going to take a, it's going to take a hot moment, <laughs> it's gonna uh, take but a we minute. could certainly post these on uh, YouTube and Twitter yeah. uh, as soon as the broadcast is over. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll, what we'll do is we'll post the pictures of you guys because we've made these like very silly awards that are just... They're very silly. Actually, can you show bit on mine? Like if you just yeah, go on mine. So we'll show you what these awards will look like. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I don't know what I got the award for. Matt will probably determine uh, that. I'm gonna go ahead and give oh, you- Oh yeah, here we go. This will be my most award. most destructive award. Uh, so let's see if we <laughs> can- gonna resize gonna it a little bit. This. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> There we are. Oh, where are we? There we go. Okay. You'll see what the most destructive award. <laughs> most destructive. There we uh, go. Once again, I'm not entirely sure if the entire world can see what it is that we're doing here, but there's there's the idea. That's the idea behind it. But yeah. what we'll do is we're so we got a picture of McKinley and Milan, 
And if we can also go to Isaiah and Matthew, if we can yep. spotlight them and take a screenshot as well. <laughs> and then can you guys both give like a big smile and then we'll make an award for you? Yeah, we'll screenshot that. Fantastic. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Great. Okay. And then how about you too, Mr. Isaiah? Give a big smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. we got a screenshot of that. And so we're going to we're gonna post these pictures and can you take the paper plate off of my head, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. As fabulous as we all looked. Uh, we'll post screenshots of you guys with your paper plate awards after we're done. And I'll email those to you, Mr. Isaiah, so that you can show them off to people. Um, but <laughs> you guys were awesome participants today. This was really, really fun. Did you guys have a good time? Yes. yes. Good, me too. I'm so glad. Well, let me share out a couple of final um, <clears throat> final things. I am just surrounded by a mess of cardboard that y'all can't see right now, but it's very satisfying. <clears throat> so a couple things that I want to share out to everybody so that they can um, follow us if they want. Matt and I are here at CodeJoy. That is our business here. And so if you want to learn more about CodeJoy, you can visit our website, which is codejoyedu.com. And we do everything that we do for the Boys and Girls Club and Family Maker Camp and Make Media. We do all of that for free. So if you really liked what we did today and you'd like to help us out, we are existing on tips right now. So if you uh, have the treasure, if you have the time and the inclination, we have a PayPal on our contribute page and that would really help us out. Thank you in advance. Um, <clears throat> but also if another way to help us out is just to kind of like boost what you like on Twitter. So even if you watched, if you made something, you can tag um, make together. That's the, that's the family maker camp hashtag. You can tag hashtag code joy. You can tag, here's Matt. There's his Twitter handle, and my Twitter handle is hiding over here. There we go. I'm at Kelsey Connects. So if you made something and you want to post a picture or a video of you making a basket, that would be great. Or if you um, just even really liked what you saw and you said, hey, that was really cool, and you tag us, that would be great too, it's just so that we know what you're liking and, and what suggestions you might have. So we would love to hear from you guys on social media. We'd love it if you could help us out a little bit, and we'd really love if you could visit our website because we've got a bunch of really cool classes coming up next week. Next week, we're going to be doing some classes around paper craft. We're going to be making some paper flowers and talking to an expert biologist so that he can kind of tell us what some of these flowers are. He works at um, this really amazing garden. So if you want to make some paper flowers, you can sign up to join our Zoom class. We like to keep our classes pretty small, so spots are limited, but those classes are actually going to be posted tonight. So if you want to join in next week, let us know, and you can sign up on our website. So. Once again, a huge thank you, if we can go to gallery view, a huge thank you to everybody who joined today. Let's give you guys a round of applause. Give yourselves a round of applause. Very nice job. Um, thank you to McKinley and Milan, to Isaiah and Matthew, and a big special thank you to Mr. Isaiah. Thank you so much for um, working with us, <clears throat> for trying new things with us, for your expertise, and, um, and for helping us find kids in your Boys and Girls Club Dayton service area to um to serve this was great yep is there a website or do you want to tell people about the youtube videos that you guys have been doing as boys and girls club dayton so we've been doing um some workout videos i've done a couple fitness videos my partner mr jeffers he's been doing some workout videos as well you can look us up on youtube under uh boys 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 and girls club dayton or bgc mm -hmm. dayton and they'll come up and you can do some workouts with me there's some exercises you can do for when you're at home uh, I know a lot of people are quarantined right now, so there are exercises that you can do while you're at home with little to no type of equipment. Um, if you need any type of equipment, it might be some soup cans or things like that. And we're going to continue to post those things throughout the year. Also, um, another one of our coworkers, Ms. Natasha, she's doing storytelling. She tells stories um, over the on the YouTube, and she does other arts and craft things that she does that people can join in and take part. So. Feel free to check us out on YouTube at BGC Dayton and see what we got in store for, for, the, for the Boys and Girls Club. 
I have had the pleasure of meeting Miss Natasha via video too, and she has a, just this a really special soul. So I'm actually hoping that we can link up with her and maybe Absolutely. do some other stuff next week. So stay tuned to our classes page on um, codejoyedu.com because yeah. uh, we may be able to work with Miss Natasha next week too. So um, Isaiah, Matthew, McKinley, Milan, is there anything you guys want to say before we go? Uh, no. Peace out. Yeah. All right. If you guys want to hang out for a minute, we're going to stop our live stream here. But if you guys have any other questions, you can hang out. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And thank you to Family Maker Camp. See you next time and stay curious.